Experimental Positive Constructions Project 20, Day 13. So, one of my neighbors came over today and come talk with me, and um, he was, we were having a discussion about maybe me possibly renovating his house, and he was like, goodness gracious, like, it's like, it's like, what have you done? I'm like, bro, I'm like, I had to. I'm like, I literally had to take everything in the house, you know, because it got completely destroyed by termites, you know? The entire house is completely destroyed by termites. So, you know, 93-year-old house, 93-year-old problems. I mean, like, you have studs that are... I mean, come on, man. your house, man. I mean, eventually you're going to have to change out these fucking, you're going to have to change out all the joists, man, because they're just bad. So this entire house was literally collapsed. It was, it was, it was, it was inevitable that it was going to happen, you know? So we had, I mean, the only thing that's actually good was the addition that they did back here. Like there was two additions, the front and the back, and even the front was, was rotting away. But the back, this is still good. I mean, but there's a lot of termite damage, you know what I'm saying? So all that's gonna have to come off. But um, but like the house over there, that's it's it's you know, I it's pretty much the same age as mine, which means I can guarantee it at the same problem. So you know what I'm learning is um, you know, whenever you buy something that's of this age, these are things you just have to expect, you know. So it's either a tear it down. You know, and wait for, you know, three to six months for planning to get it through, per, you know, get it through planning or B, you're going to pay probably twenty to twenty five thousand dollars more, but you can get started immediately. You know what I'm saying? So you have to kind of ask yourself, you know, how much is your holding cost worth or can you afford to hold it, you know, and, and, and kind of wait it out. You know what I'm saying? So um, and in my situation, it was just a volatile situation where I had I could not afford to wait it out and I had to, you know you know, all systems go, you know what I'm saying? And so I got to get this done as fast as I possibly can, you know? But um, I'm very pleased with what's been done, you know what I'm saying? Very happy. Very happy. So, um, I will keep you guys posted. So, as of right now, we uh, have about 50% of all the exterior walls completely um, changed out. <coughs> We're gonna have to change out <coughs> damn near all of them, except the ones in the back in the back bathroom. Maybe a couple in the front. <coughs> but um, you know, the lesson that, that I'm learning from this is um, if you buy a house of that age, you're gonna have to, you know, treated lumber didn't exist back then. Okay. So if you're buying a house that's 50, 60, 70, 80 plus years of age, you're going to have to consider the worst. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to consider that there's termite damage. You know, um, I had that problem in Galveston. That's why I tore it down. You know what I'm saying? I tore it down for a couple of reasons. Um, I tore it down just because, well, I tore it down because there was a couple of, uh, there, there was just so many design flaws and I paid too much money for cement pilings to justify putting a, a, a permanent structure up there that was that poorly constructed. So I remember it was funny, me and Diego just kind of sitting on the roof looking at each other, I was like, man, fucking tear that shit down and I'll start over. We built that bitch in four days. Yeah. So, but um, in this situation, um, what I have learned is when you start buying into top tier properties and top tier neighborhoods, you know, but the concept is the same. Similar old, 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 old grandma house, old house turn of the century. You, you're gonna have to rebuild it. You're gonna, I mean, you have to always assume to rebuild it. So it's interesting. I went and looked at the uh, the seller's properties. The seller has another one. The one I just bought my property from has another one. I went and looked at it, and it's the same thing. I see the entire the entire structure of it is bowed like this. You know what I'm saying? Which means the entire sub is completely collapsed. Which means I'm gonna have to do the exact same thing on this perspective property but what i mean but as far as like where i am you know because of how expensive this was it has to make sense 
So you, so whenever you buy properties like these, you have to assume that they are tear down. You cannot salvage them because you can't. You literally have to bore them out from the inside. So you, so it's two things. One, you pay cash for it, and you can afford the holding. If you actually are cash rich, then you can afford the holding costs while you run it through permitting. But the problem is, you know, in this particular county where we are now, you know, getting, you know, getting your permits, or getting your plans through permitting takes almost six months. You know what I'm saying? So if you go hard money paying nine percent for a, for a structure with with renovation, that's an expensive loan. That's an expensive pill to swallow. So you need to kind of, you know, balk, you know, with your seller where it's like, look, man, I'm like, it's not there. You know what I'm saying? Because of how, because at the end of the day, a bank is only going to give you only so much and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to top you out at a threshold of what a property is worth and everything has to make sense. So it's like, if you want to move it, then this is kind of what it is. So you kind of have to, you know, use that, utilize that information towards your purchase because that house I cannot salvage. You know what I'm saying? They can tell you all they want, but that house cannot be salvaged. It is not. It is, it is not, will not, cannot. You know what I'm saying? Your, your demolition, your demolition and your framing costs are going to be realistically about three times more. That's what it's going to cost you. So you have to expect that. So you have to kind of use that in your, when, when it comes time to negotiation. Otherwise, you're going to be upside down in your project and you're way over budget. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's kind of the nature of the beast. So, you know, my advice to anybody, you know, who's rehabbing these old historical homes, stop putting lipstick on a pig. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's still a pig. You know what I'm saying? And it's dying. You know, all you're doing is covering up you know, an ongoing problem. And you're setting up your buyer, your end buyer, up for failure. And they're, they're going to end up either suing you or they're going to end up, you know, um, you know, smearing your name. You know, after the project is finished, because you're putting lipstick on a pig. You know, if you see a problem, fix it. You know what I'm saying, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it might cost you a little bit more, but you're building a, a quality product, and the end user is going to be happy for the remainder of their remainders. Food for thought. So by mid-afternoon, we have put in a new top plate and a new bottom plate, and we shored the house up so we could build new walls. The walls are down, or the old ones, we took them down, and we have the house shored, uh, port and starboard, and um, we have our brand new top plate, and our brand new bottom plate, and there's all the old fucking walls, they all gotta go, <laughs> they gone, they gone, they gone, they gone, 93 year old house, 93 year old problems.